Cool. Now, without further ado, we're going to get in and let Miss List take the show. And uh, as you know how this goes, 10 minutes, Liz, this is all you, your time. And again, I cannot say enough and stress enough that she has helped me make a ton of, of uh, money on, on my list and my communities over the years. Um, and it's something that is so hands off that I get a notice from her and a just a direct deposit that 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 I really don't spend a lot of time on this. And she has made um, my life really easy over the years. And so if you want to work with her, please connect with her directly. This is just something that uh, I think that her talk, I think, will open your eyes to some things. And and uh, I, like I said, encourage you to work with her if it, if it makes sense for you. OK, so Liz. Uh, screen share is yours uh, if you want it, and um, you get 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Well, I'm going to have to move y'all's spaces. <laughs> All right. Um, so today, Brett asked me to talk about email deliverability and inboxing. Um, he's right. Like, things have really changed, especially in the last 12 months. It seems like every year in the last five years it's like been exponential um yeah crazy why won't my oh there it goes sorry <laughs> so uh i did tell you all a little bit so i own gram list management um my background has nothing to do with marketing i am a scientist by degree uh i was originally a chemist and microbiologist um then i taught high school science and I won a fitness contest in 2012. And from there, I guess it's serendipitous. Um, I fell into this industry. I started running email lists. I was pretty good at it and a business was born. So I've been doing this for about 11 years now. Um, those are my kids and one of my two dogs there. I have a new baby, uh, a little Frenchie that I just got like a month ago. Um, anyway, I love dogs. <laughs> so... Um, I missed something. Oh, I went past this. Um, I'm not trying to like brag or anything, but I kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, last year, my list generate, generated $13.7 million. I don't know if you know offhand how much of that was yours, Brett, but there was a chunk. We make good money together. Um, just one of my biggest lists last year made $2.6 million. And 2023 is already set to outpace last year. Um, my biggest list in Q1 made $753,000, um, which is a different list than the biggest list yet last year, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, times are changing in e the world of email. Um, and I do a lot of business there. So I feel like I can speak with some authority. So the biggest thing that... Um, I want to lead with our what are ISPs? Those are internet service providers. That's Gmail, Yahoo. What are they looking from you to inbox you? And the very first thing is your domain domain reputation and your domain authentication. And we'll talk about what do those mean here in a minute. The second most important thing is how many people are opening, clicking, and replying to your emails. Those are especially the clicking lately uh, is almost starting to take. So before the last few months, this th these things weren't quite as important as what your email said. We're starting to see that it's always been important what your, how many people are opening your emails, but now it's becoming even more important how many people are clicking or replying to them. Um, so we'll talk about what you can do here as far as opening and clicking. And then the last thing, which used to be the second thing, strangely enough, are the words you use in the content of your email. So we'll talk about each of these three strategies and what you can do. And I want you to leave here in the end of 10 minutes with some like quick things that you can do to help your emails get delivered. So domain uh, authentication, there's three major things. This is what you need to do when you set up your email service provider. Um, some of these things will apply and not all of them will. I know this is confusing. Um, I'm just going to go over these things. I'm not going to even read this to you. You can take a screenshot of it. The important things to know are DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. Um, you don't always need DMARC, but you usually need DKIM and SPF, okay? Um, 
literally all you have to do is log into your ESP and get on chat or email them and say, I need my DKIM or my SPF or my D and or DMARC from you. Can you help me? And they will give you what you need to pass to your coder or copy and paste on to your website. Um, the easiest way to know if this is working is to send yourself a Google email and you go into the email and up in the top, like where it's from, click go to the show original and you can look at the SPF, DKIM and or the DMARC fields and it'll say pass, pass, pass or fail, fail, fail. Um, this, if it's failing, is a reason why you're not inboxing. Um, this is like domain authentication. All it's doing is telling Google you are sending as yourself and you are who you say you are. Um, it's really boring and it's like technical stuff I don't like to get into, but these are super important actionable items that you can leave here today and fix a lot of your deliverability issues with. Um, so the second part here is talking about opening and clicking. That was our second big uh, process. Your open rates need to stay around 25% on average. If they are below that, you need to tighten up your segment. So usually you take clickers and you say, okay, instead of sending to all, let's send to the clickers in the last six months or the clickers in the last three months. And you tighten it up one email at a time until you can get and stay around 25%. There are people out there that'll go all the way to like 50% and I'll argue that that's overly tight. Um, but if you'll hover around 25, if it gets below 20, you're in a problematic area and you will start seeing your emails go to spam or junk. Um, keep an eye on certain ISPs. For example, uh, Yahoo and AO, AOL are highly problematic. Um, those are the problem kids. And what you can do is tighten individual ISPs. So like maybe Yahoo, you're only sending to like 14 day clickers. Whereas Gmail, you're getting to go to 30 days or 90 days. So depending on how much you can get super geeked out on this. But if you have a problematic ISP, you can segment it out and deliver it separately. If this is all messed up, this just this part, it's going to take about a month for you to fix it. So be patient, be consistent, um, slow and steady on adjusting these things. Um, we talked about the last thing about words. So the words you say and the content you use, you want your emails to be unique. So only you are using these emails and you want to avoid spam trigger words. These are some that are very common here, free weight, pounds, Viagra, sex, vaccine, COVID. You might say, Liz, I really need to say vaccine. That's fine. You can like literally do VA and then like an open parentheses for the C. Like there's ways around it. Like pounds, I change it to LBS. Um, so like every niche has its own spam trigger words. Um, if you're in uh, like, I don't know, personal loans, like money and amounts of money, those are also spam triggers. So every, every niche has its own. You can literally Google whatever your niche is or your vertical spam trigger words and you'll find a list for yours. I'm mostly in health, fitness, and supplements. So these are things that are related to that. But um, again, every there are spam trigger words for every vertical. Look at yours and avoid those words. It will definitely affect your open and clicks. All right. Um, if you didn't take anything from this, remember Mail Genius. It's free. You can send an email to that. So you just like go to mailgenius.com. You can send a test email there and it'll basically tell you what's broken. Um, it'll let you know if you're DKIM or your SPF. If you wanna get really, really granular, like you've been messing with this for a long time and you're having problems, um, you don't wanna pay me to come fix it. You can pay for MX Toolbox or Sim Forensics. They get super granular with exactly what's wrong. Uh, Sim Forensics has a really cool program and there's there's other ones of these out there I want to preface it with that but these two seem to be my favorite and I can tell you with authority like they're pretty legit. Sin Forensics has a cool thing where it shows you like where is your 
email placing in their inboxes. So is it hitting primary or is it hitting spam? And it'll tell you why it went there or their best guesses of why. Um, so- hey, hey, Liz, you have two minutes left. Okay, I'm almost done. Um, always split test. These are the most important things when you're writing an email, offer selection. If your offer sucks, you're never gonna get past that. Split test your subject line, that's the next most important. And then, then what the body says and whether or not you include an image. Um, it usually will matter on the amount of money you're making. These are common pitfalls. I'm not gonna get into the like nitty gritty on it, but make sure you're getting all your customers and leads into your platform. Um, it's very common, especially customers, they're worth five times more than leads. So really watch that you're getting your customers in your platform and then not sending enough. Like you can't just like, oh, this week I want to email and I'm going to send an email every day and then next week not. Um, going from a lot to nothing creates complaints and that compl that also affects deliverability. So get on a schedule and stick to it. I Most of my lists get emailed every day or twice a day. Um, and the last of the common pitfalls is poor offer and copy selection. You need to know your audience. Make sure you're emailing them things they are interested in. Um, and then the last one is poor list hygiene. That's where I said kind of aim for 25% open rates and make sure people are clicking on your emails. So really clicky emails or it, you can do like reply campaigns like enter to win. Um, that also helps your domain reputation. Here's what you can expect if your email subscribers are doing great. I average about $1.50 per month per active email subscriber. But you can diversify your marketing. Like if emails having issues, like SMS makes a shit ton of money. I make about $2.30 per SMS sub. These mostly do best though on your customer list, sending them your stuff. I have not had a lot of success with SMS on affiliate campaigns. And then the last one is push. Um, it's super cheap, six cents per customer per month on push. And there's like literally no rules and regulations around it. So if you have push and SMS going, if your list is having issues that backs up your revenue. Um, if you have questions and we don't have time here to answer them, here's my contact info. Um, happy to talk to anybody, Scott, Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> thank you so much, Liz. This is awesome. Seriously, thank you.